What is up everyone? Welcome to another October daily video where I'm doing 31 days of Halloween drawing. Today I am going to be drawing a rat man. Not, not the Batman, the, the rat man. It's his cousin. True story. All right, let's get started with our rat man, rat creature, rat monster, whatever you want to call this guy. Let's get started. So, um, bring this brush down. So today I am using my second gen iPad Pro with Procreate and the first gen Apple Pencil. All right, so get right into it. Just start creating this rat monster. Like all of the other drawings I've done this month, I did the sketch beforehand. Um, just to speed up the process, trying to make these videos pretty live. So I tried to get all of that done nice and early. Since there are 31 of these videos I'm putting out this month, I had to kind of go ahead and just start making the sketches um, on my free time when I was sitting at my desk, whatever it was that I was working or doing. I just had to kind of do these sketches whenever I had free time. So I had to do them off screen. So I'm sorry if any of you wanted to see these sketches being done. Uh, but if you want to get your hands on a bunch of the sketches, uh, if you join my Patreon uh, for a dollar, you get all the sketches as well as the brush pack that I am using right now. Uh, if you don't want to join Patreon, uh, join my Patreon, I should say, and uh, you still want to get the brushes that I'm using, you can get them on Gumroad as well. And you can get uh, for the $5 membership. So all that is just for the uh, dollar membership on my Patreon. But if you want to get the full high res version of all these drawings, you can actually join the $5 membership and you will get all of the 5,000 by 5,000 pixel versions of every one of these drawings. So something to keep in mind. If it sounds interesting to you, you can go check it out. All right. So the idea on this one is I was trying to think of, I didn't want to just do a rat. I wanted to kind of do like this rat monster creature that is kind of living in the sewers or something. Just, you know, he's like devouring people who come into his lair who are you know, venturing or whatever it is, whatever those kids do these days. Um, that made me sound old. Um, I guess I kind of am old. All right, so if you kind of notice a lot of times when I'm making drawings, I am all over the place um, where I'm making my line work. And that's half the reason too with my sketches it's um it's really hard for me to explain what i'm doing because most of the time i'm just kind of going from one part of the drawing to another part of the drawing and back to another part of the drawing um that's just kind of how my brain works my add kicks in and i'm like oh i gotta get that real quick before i forget and so i, I hop around a lot so um it's kind of hard to explain sometimes what I'm doing because I'll be like, yeah, I'm doing this. Oh, wait. And then I jump over to a different spot. So get his big old scary buck teeth in here. His chomping teeth. Ratman. Ratman, forgive you this time. Leave a comment down below if you know what that reference is. I'm not going to spoil it for anyone. Pretty sure that's what the quote is. Ratman, forgive you this time. Oh, 
almost done with the line work already. So that is great news. Because this one is going to take probably a little longer with the shadow. So I want to get this line work done as quick as possible. Uh, now I do the, I'm doing these quite a bit faster than I would do um, a lot of my drawings. If I'm doing a personal drawing, I'm a lot more meticulous or if it's just one specific drawing for a person, a client, whatever it is, I'll take a little bit more time to make sure everything is exactly how I want it to be. But I don't really have the luxury of doing that right now because these videos would take forever and I wouldn't be able to get all 31 of them out. So I just got to kind of go quickly and try to get as much of this done in fast motions as I possibly can. Okay, I think that is pretty good for the line work. I'm gonna get some of these extra lines in real quick while I'm at it. Get these dots in here. I'll add the whiskers later. Come on, there we go. So two fingers tapped on the screen. Works as your undo. Um, you can probably set that to something else, but that's, I'm just so used to it because that's what I learned how it was on Procreate when I first got the program, so just kind of stuck to it. Okay, so line work is done. Let's make a new layer underneath here. We're gonna click on the line layer, turn that to reference. When we drop our color in, it stays within the lines. Do a brownish gray for the skin hair area. There we go. Pinkish color for the ears. Gross yellow color for the teeth. Now this one I'll use recolor for. So you tap this recolor, pick where you want it to start, and then you can just kind of tap in all the areas that you want that to be in. And then get these teeth as well. There we go, turn that off. Let's see, his jacket can be maybe like a jean jacket color. blood parts the same color, so we'll do recolor as well for that. Start it there. And let's tap that in. Make it easier on myself, so trying to get that to land perfectly in there. Just draw it in by hand. Okay, I think we're good on that. Now let's make shadows. So new layer, clipping mask. I'm gonna go to my filler brush and this, basically this whole section right here is gonna be in shadow. Back half of that. And I'm just doing this bulk shadowing here. And I'll go in and refine it later after I get this all down. It should be good for that for now. So we'll do this, hit the end there. I'm gonna drop it down until we get a good shadow. And we're gonna go to fine liner and we're gonna start refining our shadows now. Bring the size of that up just a bit. This one is a little more complex than say the bat drawing I did this month. And that one was pretty simplistic, so that one I didn't have to move as fast, but this one's got a lot going on and I don't want this video to be super, super long, but I know there's parts where I'm just zoning out and those parts will be um, fast forwarded anyways, but I don't know how many areas I have in each video that I'll be fast forwarding in because I'm just kind of going with the flow. 
I don't really notice sometimes if I'm being quiet. I only notice that when I get to my uh, editing. So I'm talking to my future self right now. Hello, future self. Editing this. Yeah, I do all my own editing. So whenever I'm talking like this, I'm literally just talking to myself. So there's that. Probably sound a little crazy to myself sometimes. Actually, I know I do. Not probably, I know I sound crazy sometimes when I'm talking to myself like this. What I can do is I'm gonna follow my line I just made here with the selection tool. And then make sure you have free select down on the bottom selected. Now this is something you can do in Photoshop if you're drawing too. It's not just Procreate only, you can kind of select a whole area like that and then Shadow it all up, color it all in, however you're doing your process. And then I can go in later and erase some of the shadow so it's not so heavy. I do that after I finish all the shadows normally though. This little curved shadow here. This arm is rounded, so I don't want it perfectly straight line. Now this whole back half is really heavily shadowed right now, but I am going to go back in and do kind of a rim light around a bunch of this stuff, so that'll kind of clear up some of this heavy shadow. So now what we're going to do, we're going to grab our eraser and we're going to get a rim light in a bunch of these areas that are really heavily shadowed. So finding some edges and just getting rid of some of the shadow. And this will add a good sense of depth in your drawing. And this kind of shows that there's light coming in from other directions, maybe not as strong as the main light source, but a little bit is coming in from the back. Most of the time, even in a dark room with some, you know, just a couple of lights on, you'll have one that's gonna be stronger than others, and then you're gonna have an area where a little light bleeds in on, say, like the back of your head or whatever it is. So most of the time, Something's rarely just strongly in one shadowed area. All right, we're almost done with the rim lighting here. Let's get just this back here. The nice thing is about doing this is you can kind of get a sense of highlights without actually adding highlights in these areas. So I can do that with the tail here. A little sense of highlight without actually adding any colors or anything like that. So now it's time for some highlights throughout the piece. Um, this shouldn't be too many highlights. I normally don't make that many anyway. So we're gonna do clipping mask, white, and let's just get some stuff on some of these edges here. I don't always do a lot of lighting on the edges, but this is a heavily shadowed drawing, so I'm trying not to add a bunch everywhere. Just on a couple of the edges of the hair and stuff like that. I remember when I was in art school, uh, the program we were in was pretty traditional. I was one of the very few people in there that actually did a lot of cartooning. Um, we did have a animation department and whatnot too, but most of the people there were very traditional, including the teachers. But I remember when I had a professor tell me, why are you putting all of your highlights and shadows only on the edges. And I was like, well, it's a cartoon, you know, it's not like it's real life, it doesn't have the same kind of dimension. And she had told me that it doesn't matter if it's cartoon or not, 
And she even prefaced with, I don't make cartoons, but I know even with a cartoon, you don't want to put all of your highlights and everything just on one side and all your shadows on just the other side. It makes it look extremely flat and it will you know, make the picture not as appealing. And for the longest time, I kind of felt like, oh, she didn't know what she was talking about. She even said that she doesn't do cartooning. But as time went on, I started to realize that what she was saying was true. If I had all the shadows just on one side, I didn't have any of these rim lights or anything like that, that it would flatten out the piece. And it really did. I look at some of my old drawings and they were flat. They were very flat. And I didn't see it at the time, but, um, you know, she saw it and I didn't want to believe her. And, you know, I was quite a bit younger at that point. So I still probably had that idea that, um, you know, older people didn't know what they were talking about, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. But no, she did. She knew what she was talking about and I was absolutely wrong. Um, but we're almost done with this piece now. I'm going to go to my airbrush here. Add a little bit of a shadow underneath. Ooh, that is way too big. Bring that down. And go to Gaussian Blur. Blur that out just a little bit. Bring that opacity down just a little bit. Turn off that sketch layer. I don't know why I keep that on for so long. And then let's make a bigger one. Go up here. And go Gaussian Blur. All right, last thing we need to do real quick is I'm going to go in and add some extra lines, some stitch marks, things like that throughout the entire piece. Give it a little extra detail. And I still need to add those whiskers in. All right, so there it is, the finished rat man, rat monster character. I think this turned out really cool. But remember, this is only one of 31 videos this month. So if you haven't seen the other ones, make sure you check it out. There's going to be a link for it up on the uh, card there. But make sure you subscribe as well so you don't miss the future ones that I'm doing this month. And like always, keep drawing. And until next time, bye.